Welcome back everybody, it is time for more of the Marquise Walker Career Mode series here on Madden 19. How's everyone doing today? Episode number 20, right? Sure hope so. But it's week 6, we enter 4 and 1, Odell dropped it. Hopefully he catches him during the game, there you go, just gotta get warmed up. Odell Beckham, two touchdowns in last episode, and hopefully much more to come after a slow start to the season. But the Giants are 4-1 with the number one offense in the NFL. And now we're in an interesting spot set to take on Washington for our next two games. We play them, have the bye week, and do it all over again. Let's go. This is my first episode since the latest update put out for Madden 19. And after a couple crashes, I guess I can finally play the game. First and 10, up high, Evan Ingram unable to hang on to it. So I had a crash on this game loading up the file. Then I was able to load it up just fine, but couldn't get into the game. And then I was able to get into the game. So we kind of progressed the levels of stability here in Madden 19, and now we're actually on the field. I have played an episode, or watched an episode rather, of my Cardinals rebuild. And the gameplay in there, I thought, was really entertaining, really fun, and I can't wait to record more of it. In this series, I also play with sliders nearly at default. I just have fumble um, lowered for each side because it was supposed to help with running backs and the, the use of moves and everything. So I'm not sure if it's necessary now to lower fumble or not. But uh, we'll see how Saquon runs today. There were a number of missed opportunities in the last game. That was pretty much the topic of conversation in the comments section. That kind of took away from the 400 plus yards I had in the air. Let's get some right here. Barkley inside the 10. I'm probably going to mess with the tackle slider at some point. Because obviously Marquise breaks a million tackles. I feel that... There are a little too many broken tackles. The reason I haven't messed with it yet is because it also affects run defense and block shedding. And I felt the running game was in a pretty good spot as far as, like, players having room to run. Oh, off the mark there, drilling the pylon intended for Shepard. But yeah, new patch out for Madden, so always got to see what things are like after an update. I thought the September update was negative for the game. Hopefully the October update is good. I had a, a pretty amazing slider set in my eyes as Walker goes down. I love the sliders I had before that September update. I put a lot of time into getting my Dolphins franchise ready. And then like the day I go to play my first game, here's an update. And I didn't, didn't like it. Third down and goal. Can't get over aggressive here. We need just the right amount of aggressive. Up high, Evan Ingram comes down with it! Touchdown, Giants! On the opening play of the game, he didn't make that catch, but now he makes the one that really matters. That was awesome right there. Kerrigan's there, so is a defensive back. That's Nicholson. That's a pretty awesome catch there by Ingram, who leads the team in touchdown receptions. And that's why we are the number one offense in the NFL, everybody. Marquise Walker now with 10 touchdown passes and 4 touchdown rushes on the season. Let's go play action. Drop it off ahead of the pressure. Evan Ingram, gain of 7. Sterling Shepard slot right looking for catch number 300 on this possession. On 2nd down and 3, we're going to go to Shepard. He makes it number 300 for the great receiver. On first and ten, now Saquon Barkley, and no unnecessary moves. Good pickup on the ground. Now, when there are patch notes released for a title update in Madden, realize that that's not all you need to know. In most games, you can look at a title update and be like, okay, cool, I know what I have to know. You don't when it comes to Madden, because every patch does something to gameplay, even if it's not written up in the, in the notes. It always has something different. And sometimes it's things in the blocking department. Oftentimes it's in the blocking department. So you got, got to play some games and get to know the patch. And decide if you like it. Although you can't roll back to a previous update, which they should let you do that in some cases, I feel. 
I'm just tired of talking about sliders and updates though. I just want to play solid football for 12 months and then do it again on a new version. It's disappointing that the game always needs so many updates and we gotta wait on patches still even for the 2023 bug and people having their franchise files corrupted. Floating this out, oh no, oh boy. Picked off Trevor Williams. Upset I didn't sign him in my Cardinals series, I guess. They put the pressure on me there and I did not react appropriately. So for Marquise, that is interception number four on the season. It feels like most of my picks in this series have been intended for Odell Beckham. We'll run the football now, Saquon Barkley to the 20. On second down and six, across the middle, we got Alex Arma, the fullback, picks up a gain of 13 yards. Hopefully by the next update, though, we can get some of the crashes and bugs here out of franchise and just, like, focus on playing and kind of leave it at that. Here goes Walker up the middle. Like, honestly, when it comes to Madden releases... I don't get as excited as I do for other games, even though, like, I always want to see what's new in Madden. Uh, just because I know that this time of year, it's like we spend the first two months, or I do anyway, like, trying to fix problems inside the game that I don't want to plague my series. And it's Ingram across the middle. The game I get excited for most when it comes to sports is uh, MLB The Show. Because I know that when the show drops, I can play franchise day one out of the box on a default... Uh, difficulty and be like set forever don't get me wrong I still enjoy these series and I wouldn't do them if I didn't but uh there are just so many things that still need to get better with the game and they're gonna blitz the safeties here I'll just swing it outside Saquon Barkley's too quick he's up the sideline inside the 25 Four receivers on the field here for New York. I'm going to run once again here. And Walker's inside the 20. On second down and five, it's Barkley again. Kerrigan wraps him up. I do like what I've seen from the running game so far. Both some pieces of that Cardinals rebuild video. That's probably on my channel already. And then um, the varied runs in here. We've seen them, you know... Be able to make good plays through the line of scrimmage and also plays where Barkley clearly gets his victories. So that variety is vital. Third down and five. Evan Ingram got it again. Tries to go aerial and he's taken down at the five yard line. DJ Fluker now hurt. Do I have DJ Humphreys in both series now? Is he the left tackle in this one? I think so. Saquon Barkley, wide open, no jukes, no spins, just running into the end zone the way he should. Touchdown, Giants. Now it's a short field here for the 4-1 New York Giants and the number one offense in the NFL. Marquise Walker in the shotgun here from the 32, and they're going to blitz. Oh, boy. Get rid of it. No, it wasn't outside the tackle box. But I threw it in the direction of Shepard. Well, that's not ideal, everybody. Loss of 14 yards because of that. I'm going to try a screen here and see if anything's different with this play. And it's set up nicely, and I nearly threw a pick to a lineman. Alrighty, third down, 24. Might not be so easy to get points like I thought it would be. Flag on the play. We'll just throw it to Odell Beckham. Getting into field goal range, and I bet it's going to be third and 34. Never mind, they declined the penalty, which is not a smart move because we can kick. And we do. So, Washington gives us the opportunity. We take advantage off the turnover. Let's see how running behind a fullback goes now since the update. I saw some good things when the Steelers tried it in my uh, first game. Uh-oh, Barkley, you gotta prioritize getting upfield over getting outside here. Just going to put shoe clock on and hope I can get away without trying to do much. Although, if they make a good play here, they're going to use one of their timeouts. Oh, well, what can I do? I can't snap it until now. Saquon Barkley stopped. So who's got the Josh Norman coverage then? Would that be Beckham? Probably not with that advantage. Guessing Norman's playing left corner. Third down and 10. And how about Arma? That's a little too late and by a little I mean uh, a couple seconds it's all good though we're on to the second half same score 17 to 7 and the Giants have the football 
And it looks like Norman now matched up across from Odell Beckham, if I'm not mistaken. First and 10. Play action. Oh, this is a tough throw. But we got it there, Shepard. Let's run the counter. And Barkley breaks a tackle and still can't get much. He started out with a couple good carries and made me think that it'd be a really good day for him, but not so fast. All right, Saquon Barkley, another carry here on second down and a good stop yet again. And Barkley shaken up on the play. Whoa. Barkley out and in comes Rashad Waters. Third down and eight. Odell lines up to the right side, throwing his way. Incomplete for Odell Beckham. My first impressions of this patch are positive from a gameplay standpoint. It's just like the stability in franchise mode ever since last year hasn't been right. A lot of the super sim bugs are gone now that plague the Brown series with crashes, but yeah, I mean, on a gameplay standpoint, we're seeing some progress right now. Here's Marquise Walker for nine. Thought maybe I could go deep down the middle on that last play, but... Just seemed a little too risky, up by 10 points with room to run. Here's Waters now in the game without Saquon Barkley. So the interior isn't really fun to mess with, but how about the exterior? First and 10, toss out Rashad Waters, nope. DJ Swearinger and Preston Smith. This defense really is no joke. They got good players at all levels. Second down and 14. And maybe hanging on to the ball a bit long on this play as Marquise breaks a tackle and we have ourselves another first down. Yeah, I'll look to mess with that tackle slider. Not a ton, maybe a little bit. First down and 10. And across the middle, Scandlebury's going to hang on to it. Gain of 20. From the 30 now, Waters wrapped up once again. There's Smith and Jonathan Allen. Jonathan Allen, a big gamer, by the way, if you didn't know that. I remember reading an article that Jonathan Allen's first purchase, he said after being uh, after getting his first round rookie contract, was going to be a, a gaming PC. Here we go, Scandalberry inside the 10. I wonder how much some of these guys put into their gaming PCs because if you're making NFL money, you can you can get some real frames, I'm sure. Let's go outside here. Got it! No! Oh man, it was like watching a touchdown get ripped away from me right there. Odell Beckham Jr. is the motion man on second down. He's been pretty quiet in this game. And Beckham takes us to the two. Third and goal, New York. We're going up top. Odell! No! Beckham can't make the catch. I have not seen that deflection animation this year. That was something else. Try to throw it up over the top of a safety who just puts his shoulder into Beckham. Ten-point game here in the fourth quarter. Nice lead here for New York. We'll focus on the clock now. Saquon Barkley back in the game as we go with a run that I used to do in uh, my Minnesota Dynasty. I loved uh, the pistol formation. That series is a big reason why I'm a fan of the pistol formation. And after watching how teams in real life use it, I think the pistol offense is probably... It might be the best offense in a lot of cases. There are a lot of uh, smart coaches who do a lot in the shotgun, but I think the pistol is the most versatile of formations because you can still have the running back, you know, six, seven yards deep in the backfield. You have uh, a short shotgun snap, so I feel that uh, it makes the quarterback drops a little bit easier. You can do a lot with motion um, in front of the quarterback. Still, there's room, although it's more convenient out of the shotgun. And you can do more with multi-back sets and different alignments there. Running backs to the side of the quarterback, behind. Love the pistol offense. I don't do it in everything, though, because I, I gave you all a big series with a majority pistol offense where I did pretty much everything there was to do in these games. On first and 10, Saquon Barkley gets the carry and displays some impressive power. Now it's an off-ball injury for Odell Beckham Jr. Just when we get uh, Saquon back into the game, we lose Odell. 
Anybody else ever just think about what if we took an offense from today's NFL and just like put them in a game 20 years ago with all the motion we get pre-snap and all the jet sweeps and imagine like the Kansas City Chiefs playing against any team in the year 2005. I think that they would just win by 50. They would not know how to defend it. Getting rid of that one. Not to mention that defenses back then definitely were not set up to defend today's offenses with their linebackers. You put Tyreek Hill in a jet motion, and there's nothing they can do at all. Not with those 250-pound run stoppers. Man, couldn't get rid of it in time. We had open receivers everywhere. Seven on the board for Washington. Now it's 20-17. to 17. Oh, boy. We've got to have a better possession this time. We do not have Odell Beckham in the game, however. We will run it. Saquon Barkley, nothing. Second down and 12. Oh, man. Incomplete for Sertain. Things are falling apart right here. This is a monumental third and 12. I do not want to blow this game. So he ran this play in a big spot in a recent episode. I love to hit Gresham here. Got to hold that linebacker. I like to run an angle route here over anything else. Just, just to really clear him out of the way. And here's Marquise incomplete. Through the hands of Gresham. And that's going to give Washington a chance now. We're going to sim slower. Fourth down. We punt, of course. And then Alex Smith getting to work, throwing incomplete three times in a row. Defense comes up huge. So, of course, going to run the football quite a bit now. Barkley stays on his feet. Still not much room, though. Inside give now. Barkley again tries to cut it out to the right. This run defense is really good. Gresham and Sertain on the outside, two rookies. Big play on third down. First down picked up, it's Evan Ingram. He's our leading receiver, and he's come through in some really key situations. Hand off Saquon Barkley, and he hesitated. Now finds some daylight. That's a good pickup. We can possibly make them use all their timeouts now. Another handoff, very close. I've just been impressed all day by their defensive line and just the entire front seven, I guess. All right, third and two. This could win the game right here. They will bring four, and we got Sterling Shepard underneath, and that is going to be enough to win the game. So we don't do it with a lot of points in this episode, but rather we... Just kind of have a good start and do what we can to hang on the rest of the way. 20 to 17. One more thing we need is the ability to just hit a button right here that says, like, end game. Just put zeros on the clock, put everybody out toward midfield. They can't stop the clock. We have it won. Why bother doing anything else? Of course, with the simming here, it's actually not over. There's not much I can do about that. We kick a field goal instead of just running the clock out. And now we win by six instead. So 23-17 actually your final. Good game here for the Giants. Well, it wasn't a great game. Pretty good start for us. And like I said, we kind of just take that early success to the end. Really cool touchdown by Evan Ingram. And hopefully Odell Beckham is okay. Walker this game was 20 of 30 passing for just over 300 yards. One touchdown, one interception, plus some rushing yards for Marquise. Not quite the team's leading rusher, as Barkley did get 48, but overall not a good day for our running backs. Evan Ingram, 70 or 97 yards. Odell, just four catches and missed some action. Hopefully he will not be missing any more. By the way, here was the touchdown early in the game to Evan Ingram. In the highlights, it actually called this, like, broken up. We see Ingram go up, make the catch, he comes down, and the ball gets ripped out afterwards, but it was still ruled a touchdown. So we have some games here where you really, some plays where you really don't know, was it a catch or not? And now it's upgrade time for Marquise Walker, another skill point earned. 
We are a West Coast scheme, and we're going to put points into West Coast. Accuracy ratings there for short and medium are pretty good. And we'll see what we get this time. It is plus one medium, short, and under pressure. But maybe on our next one now, we can go with something like strong arm and get the arm strength up a little bit more. Look at that, everybody. The Giants have sent Marquise Walker a job offer. We cannot see what the contract is, but we can choose to accept it without knowing what it is, how many years or anything. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Do we accept the offer or wait and see? We are currently 5-1 on the season. Marquise, a big part of that. After a tough week one, we've been pretty good for five straight weeks. Ten touchdown passes, four touchdown runs. And Odell Beckham, by the way, he is hurt. It is a shoulder tear out for three weeks. So it's not going to be a major injury. And actually, we're in our bye week right now, so he's only going to miss two games. But I think we have the receiver depth to make up for him. Not entirely, but we have talent there and Evan Ingram, of course. So that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Please smash that like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel and leave your feedback below in the comments. See you again soon. Have a great day.